How many miles can you put on a pair of running shoes before it's time to retire them? This is not a riddle. Let's talk about it. So if you're new to running, this is a very important question for you to answer, and it's good for you to track your mileage. If you've been in running for a while, maybe this is just going to be a recap of something to think about because you can get pain points and other issues if your shoes are dead. So a quick Google search from the main running websites like Runner's World and other sites out there are going to tell you that essentially the good quality running shoes on the market today should get you between 300 and 500 miles of running. This is obviously dependent on the kind of runner that you are, how heavy you are, how hard you run, and I guess where you are running, like the surface. If you're running on trail or concrete or beach or, I don't know, mountainous terrain, whatever, those kinds of things are obviously going to impact the lifespan, but in general, three to 500 miles. Now, I tend to put a thousand miles on my shoes. That's just what I've had as my mark for a while. I'll walk you through some of my thinking on that and kind of what would make me retire a shoe sooner as we go through this. So really quickly, one of my favorite things to do is when I find a pair of shoes that I like and works really well, I always buy two of them. There's a benefit to that that I'm going to talk about later in the video, and I think it'll be something that's worth knowing for you if you're going to be a lifelong runner. The other thing that I do, which is just more for fun, is I switch one of the one of the shoes, one of the sets. So I end up with off colors that I run in and it's more just fun. So just something to think about. But one of the one of the most fun parts about running is the gear, the shoes, the outfits, just all of that athletic stuff I think is a lot of fun. I think most people really enjoy it, but you don't always need to buy a new pair of shoes. So let's talk about the lifespan of a shoe uh, in general, like excluding the miles. What do you do? Well, first off, just look at your shoes, right? For instance, these shoes have a little wear happening right here in the heel cup. Okay, there's a little bit of tearing going on, you can see, but that's not giving me any blisters. I've had shoes in the past where that wear is taking place and I start to get blisters on my feet. That's a sign that it's time to retire the shoe. Don't keep pushing that shoe. So if at any point a shoe is giving you pain, blisters or other issues like top level, not not on the bottom area, but just well, maybe on the bottom, too, if you've got some wearing through, then it's time to retire the shoe. That's an obvious time. Sometimes people try and hang on to a shoe. Uh, longer than they should in that regard. So another thing that you can do is check this, the midsole or the insole, I guess, and just kind of see how does it look. You know, if I compare this to the brand new one that has not been run in, you're going to see some major differences. Obviously, you can see where my toe sits. Okay. (laughs) Mitosis. That was not a joke, but, and then if we look at the inside here, look at the wear there. Okay. It's not too bad. Clearly, I've got a lot more um, pressure going on in that midsole, which is very nice, or the, the middle of my foot. So this is a great thing to check. Pop out your midsoles, see how they're, or your insoles, the inserts, and just kind of see how is the wear going in that area. One thing to note about these shoes is that because they are um, super light, these are PBs, the top sole material is going to wear through faster. All right. So I guess not the top sole, the mesh upper is going to wear through faster. So I really like lightweight, summer ready running shoes, if you will. They're they're very thin and airy. And so in this case, this top area is a thinner material that's going to wear through faster. And if I show you this really quickly, you'll see this mesh upper is starting to wear through right there. But that's not a big deal as a runner. Like some of this area has has kind of worn out a little bit and and maybe a little bit in that area as well. The black one or the black and yellow one has a little more wear. So you can kind of see that. Okay. But overall, the shoes are, they look in pretty good. In fact, I think if you just saw me walking around, you couldn't tell which set was new unless you looked at maybe the dirtiness of, I got to turn that off, of this area right here. Okay. That's really the only way. Um, Overall, the shoes look in pretty much identical condition until we get to the bottom. That's the sole difference between the shoes. That was a, anyway, it's good stuff. So, um, really quickly before we go to the, to the, the underside of the shoe, I want to address something that a lot of runners need to figure out. And that is just tracking your miles. Either have a, have a document where you write down all of your runs, get a, get an actual tracker, which is what I use, Apple Watch, Garmin, whatever, to track your miles. It is just really helpful to know, oh, I've done three, four hundred miles in these shoes. If you're going to get into running and you're going to buy a pair of shoes, 
go find a, as soon as you start running in those shoes, start tracking the miles because you might feel like, oh, I've worn these shoes out and you've only got 150 miles in them. You could probably keep running in them. So, uh, or you're like, you know what? They look fine. I think I'm good, but you've put 900 miles in the shoes. It might be time for a new pair. So um, let's talk about the soles on these shoes really quickly because that's going to be where you learn some things about yourself as a runner. And that's why I suggest getting two of the identical pairs of shoes. So if I flip these over, you're going to see the differences between these two shoes as I've been running in them. You know, if you look, the, comp the uh, stack height, not the stack height, but the width, the thickness of this insole part here or the outsole, um, versus this one has a, a decent amount of wear. Now, I used to be a really bad heel striker. I wasn't really paying attention to how I was running and I could wear through this back section right here, like completely to this, um, <laughs> to the boost part. And I realized that that isn't how I wanted to run. So I started working really hard at changing my landing strike, how my foot hit the ground. And I've been able to basically eliminate that that super extra hard wear. You know, if we look at these two here, you can see I've still got a, a chunk there, all right? The thickness is still gonna be different for sure. Um, but I've definitely improved on that heel strike. And then if you look, the main area that I really improved on was I focused on landing in this four foot area, this toe box, and you can see that's where all of my wear has taken place. There's a little bit of wear on this area. One thing that I noticed when I was running, and it might be on, no, yeah, I've basically done, yeah, is that I was having, I was getting a lot of extra wear on this edge of my foot, that saw, that little toe edge. And so I worked hard at transitioning my landing over more into this area, driving through this big toe. And you can see this is where the main wear is taking place now. So I'm getting really good push off through that strong big toe, that bone area. If you look at the, you know, the skeletal um, makeup of the body and all that, that's going to be something that I've worked hard to, to kind of maintain over the miles of running. So if we compare these two worn out shoes, you can see I've almost gotten myself symmetrical in my landing. Um, and that's just through, you know, repetition work, trying to think through foot placement. Obviously, I wore through that a little heavier and that's going to be my right foot. OK, so you can see. And this is just really useful information as a runner. It's a great way to just kind of see how did how have you worn through your shoe? How are you striking the ground? These shoes have <laughs> they have a little over 750 miles on them. I've run almost 900 miles this year and about 150 to, to, you know, maybe 100, 150 miles have been another pair of shoes. But these shoes I've tracked and I know I've got over 750 miles in them. So I'm not planning on retiring them until the end of the year. I plan to run in these until December, in the end of December. And then I'm going to start these guys for the new year. I like to start January 1st and then just run for a year in the shoe, no matter how much running I do. The only reason that I would retire these shoes earlier than that is if I started to have pain. One thing to note is that the compression is affected, obviously, through the mileage. So this this ultra boost that I've been running in is not going to bounce back as fast as the new ultra boost because it's been worn out. It's been, you know, compressed hundreds and hundreds of times for hundreds and hundreds of miles. So <clears throat> you can see that it's not going to look as different here. The main place you'll see the difference is when the pounding is taking place on the pavement. You know, when it hits the pavement, it's going to take the shock but it's not going to bounce as much. It also means that like, it's not going to take as much of the shock because it's already been compressed. This is going to feel lighter on my feet and I'm excited for the new year in those. So obviously that means you're going to run a little faster in newer shoes typically, but I wouldn't recommend buying new pair of shoes to race in. You need to break those suckers in, make sure they work well for your feet and all that good stuff, especially if it's a long distance race. If it's a 5k, you'll probably be okay. But, um, so this is just meant to kind of help people think through, you know, how many miles can you put on your shoes? I, again, I put about around a thousand miles on the shoes is when I retire them. And I found that that works really well for me. There are times where I've retired a pair of shoes early because something went wrong in like the heel cup section typically is what happens for me. Something wears through in here and then I'm like, okay, I'm starting to get blisters. I got to retire those shoes. But even if I was to have maybe a little hole forming here, I'd probably keep going unless I was a long ways from the thousand mile mark. So uh, I've been really happy with these Ultra Boost PBs. One thing that I hate is that they always move on to some new style for the new year because they're always trying to, you know, 
just sell more shoe. And that's kind of obnoxious as a runner because I would love to just buy tons of these, but they're also very expensive. So I buy them on sale. I got these like buy one, get one basically. So normally these are gonna be 180 to $200 shoes. I did not spend $360 on these shoes. I spent 180. Basically these I got for like, well, one of the pairs I got for like 90 and the other pair was maybe 100, 100 to 115. So always do your best to find the stuff on sale. We're coming to a season right now where a lot of things are going on sale. I just realized my, uh, my wedding band is not, I was uh, working out and I hadn't put it back on. So <laughs> fix that. Um, but uh, this is a great opportunity for you to get out there and buy some shoes at a major discount, shop Amazon discount, stuff like that. And uh, hopefully this helped you out, kind of think through some of your own running. So hope you have a good one. I hope this was informative for those of you that are trying to make these kinds of decisions and join me in my running journey. I'm going to keep posting tons of stuff about running and help you make some good decisions on your running gear. Uh, side note, I guess I didn't talk about them, but I run in these laces. These are called Caterpie laces. They are bungee laces. And... I absolutely love them. Like these have been on my shoes from the get go. So 750 miles of running. Actually, these are double. I, these, these orange laces, I ran in, in my old shoes and I transferred them. So these have probably got like almost 2000 miles of running in them. They're amazing. And once you figure out your correct setup for these laces, you never have to tie a pair of shoes again. Just slip them right in and you're off to the races. So I hope that, again, I hope this helped you, and I know that was kind of repetitive, but uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one.